Hi, everybody. This is Shauna Odette from the Flying Cat Academy. Welcome to lesson number 50. In this lesson, we will introduce the student to the concept of schwa. We'll only be looking at schwa on the letter A and how it makes the uh sound. Let's begin by setting up the table. You'll need your top 160 sight word list, the sight word study method instruction sheet, the pack of sight words on which the student's currently working, some blank index cards, a highlighter, markers, and some pencils. For the short vowel drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheet, the keyword pictures, and the keyword sentence. Remember that once the student has mastered the short vowel sounds, you will discontinue this drill. For the phonemic awareness drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheets and the colored tiles for the student. For the visual drill and auditory drill, you'll need the teacher instruction sheets and the student's card pack, remembering that you are taking out the sounds as they are mastered. We'll have a syllable card drill that will involve four different syllables today, and we're focusing on ED as a suffix. If you would like to make this simpler for the student, you could have some of the words completely unscrambled and they're just reading across the four columns to make words, or you could scramble them all if you think the student's ready for that. It just depends on where they're at. When we move on to the magnetic letter tile drill for reading and spelling, you'll need the teacher instruction sheets and the cookie sheet with magnetic letter tiles spread in a rainbow shape. You'll need the syllable pounding instruction sheet, the new phoneme grapheme kinesthetic discovery instruction sheet, and the sheets for the lesson. That will include the syllable um, syllabication sheet, the chart for working on building the, the words using the doubling rule, and then the sheets that you're used to seeing, which include the single word list, the short story, and the three sentences for the writing section. In addition, we'll have some drills for when we introduce our new concept. These are two drills for when schwa happens on the A. We have this little symbol that we use. It looks like an upside down E to represent the schwa. And I've got all the second syllables there in a pile. Then we'll have a second drill showing that schwa can also be on the second syllables, not always on the first. Let's work on our sight words. Student, can you take out your sight word pack? I want you to read through each of your cards. When you get one correct, you will put a check mark in the corner of the index card. When you finish reading all the cards, you will give the card pack to your teacher. And then it's your teacher's turn to read. The teacher reads each card and you write down the word. When you get a word correct in the other corner, you will put a check mark. And teacher, you're ready with blocking strategies in case the student encounters difficulties. It's time for the short vowel drill, so you'll need your keyword pictures and your keyword sentence. Take two fingers and trace the keyword shape. Apple, and then say the key keyword sound. Ah. Do this as many times as your teacher deems necessary, and then move on to the next one. You'll work through all five vowel sounds and then read the sentence, stretching out the vowel sounds as you do it. Let's do the phonemic awareness drill. Student, you're going to need your colored tiles for this one. Your word is cob. Can you repeat that word? If I was going to use it in a sentence, I might say, I would like some corn on the cob. Okay, now build the word cob with your colored tiles. And then tap it and say it. You should have three tiles down and they'll be all different colors. Okay, if that's cob, I would like you to take out a new tile and call it ol. Can you repeat that sound? Put the ol right after the k in cob and tap it and say it. Did you get clob? If you did, that's correct. Part of the word clobber. Okay, find the ah in clob and touch that tile. Change the ah into an uh. Now tap it and say it. Did you get club? If you did, that's correct. Find the k in club. Change the k to a s. 
What's your new word? Tap it and say it. Did you get slub? It's not a word that I know. Let's turn it into a word that you will know. So find the uh in slub. Change the uh into an ah. And tap it and say it. Did you get slab? If you did, that's correct. Now find the o in slab. Change the o into a k. And what's your new word? Tap it and say it. Did you get scab? If you did, that's correct. Find the b in scab and change the b into a m. What's your new word? Tap it and say it. Did you get scam? If you did, that's right. Add a p to the end of scam. And what's your new word? Did you get scamp? If you did, that's right. Now take away the s and what are you left with? Tap it and say it. Did you get camp? If you did, that's right. Great work. You can put your tiles away. It's time for the visual drill. You'll need your card pack for this one. The teacher flashes a flash card and the student says the sound. Here we go. What's the sound of this one? Did you say th and th? If you did, that's correct. Teacher, you can flash about six to eight cards and then come back to me. Now let's do the auditory drill. We'll use the same card pack that we used in the visual drill. This time the teacher doesn't begin by showing the card. Instead, you say the sound. Student, your sound is I. Can you repeat that sound? Now write the symbol that goes with I. And as you're writing it, I want you to say the sound. Then underline it and say the sound again. Then we check our work. Did you write I? The short sound of I is I. If you did, that's right. Do about six to eight cards in this way and then come back to me. It's time for the syllable card drill. The teacher has this one all cut out and set up on the table for you. You'll read down the syllables in each column beginning on the left and working your way over to the last one on the right. And then you'll read across each row making nonsense words. Then it's time to unscramble. You can unscramble the different syllables in the columns to make words. Remember to talk about the meanings and put some of the words into sentences as you do this activity. Let's do some syllable pounding. I'm going to say a word and I'd like you to count the syllables. You can either do this by stretching out your arm and pounding out each syllable as you say it, or you could say the word and you'll feel your jaw drop for each syllable. So those are two different strategies you could employ. You're listening for the vowel sounds. Okay, ish. How many syllables in ish? Did you say one? If you did, that's right. I hear the I sound in ish. How about this one? Astonish. How many? Did you say three? Astonish. If you did, that's right. How about this one? Enchanted. Enchanted. Did you say three? If you did, that's correct. How about this one? Tracked. I only hear one in that one. I hear the ah sound. Try this. Distracted. Did you say three? If you did, that's right. Good job. Let's practice scooping syllables. You'll need this worksheet for this activity. You should take out your instructions for scooping syllables. And your teacher's keeping an eye on the time, so you might not have time to do all three words on this sheet, but you can definitely do one or two. Follow the instructions by beginning with dotting the vowels, and your teacher will help you as needed. We've been working on the one, one, one rule. This is a rule that applies 
to close syllables. And it's about what we do when we have a one syllable word that has one short vowel and ends in only one consonant. And we want to add an ending, a suffix that starts with a vowel. When all these things are present, we double the last consonant in the base in, in the word pet. So if I wanted to spell petted, that's how I do it. Let's practice making word sums. And you're going to use the chart to do that. You won't have time to do all of this chart, but your teacher's keeping an eye on the time. And you can choose between some of the real and nonsense words that are listed. And you can make your word sums. And I'd like you to talk out your thinking as you do it. Let's move into the new content part of the lesson. We're going to begin by reviewing some of the sounds that we've been working on for so long for the vowels. We've learned that the short sound of A is A. Ah. Let's make that sound now. Put your hands in your throat and let's make it A. Ah. A. Ah. Do you feel how there's like a little pulling back here? A. Ah. The jaw drops. A. Ah. Now say I. I. A. Ah. I. Try that. Now let's try aw. Aw. Okay. Let's try uh. Uh. And that's the short sound of you. And I'm wondering which of those sounds is the simplest to make? A, e, i, uh. I would say it's uh, because all you do is just drop your jaw, everything's nice and loose, and there it goes uh. So I call this uh sound of the short U the laziest sound. And the idea today is that I'm going to inter introduce you to a concept called schwa. Can you repeat that? Schwa. And schwa is this tendency that we have to mess around with certain vowel sounds. And instead of saying the correct vowel sound, we insert this short U sound of uh. Why do we do this when we're speaking? Well, you know, we're, we're lazy creatures and it's much easier just to drop your jaw and say, uh. It also is a way that we can speed up some long words. You'll often hear it in the middle of um, long words, we'll insert a schwa. Um, it's often happening on open syllables uh, because on an open syllable, we'll be saying the name of the letter. So think about, think about A. So try and make the sound A. A, can you say that? A, and now say uh, uh. See how so much easier it is to make that uh sound? A, uh. No comparison, right? So being the lazy creatures that we are, we often schwa A. Instead of saying A, we say uh. And just to show you how this works, if I have the word go, here's a really common word. And my first syllable would be this open syllable. So this would say its name. This should be a go, a long time ago. But you know we don't say that in stories. We say, let's just say it naturally, a long time ago. Do you see how we did that? So instead of saying a like we should, we schwad it. We said uh, which is not correct. The thing about it is that even though the way, the way that we speak changes over time, and we are lazy creatures, so we tend to mess around with the sounds improperly, uh, the way that we spell doesn't change. So this was created as A, and it will stay A for all of time, but the way we speak has changed. We've gotten lazy and said uh improperly. So there's a symbol that we can use. It looks like an upside down E as the schwa symbol to say, hey, better read this as an uh. Let's move into the new content part of the lesson. We're going to begin by reviewing some of the sounds that we've been working on for so long for the vowels. We've learned that the short sound of A is A. Ah. Let's make that sound now. Put your hands in your throat and let's make it A. Ah. A. Ah. Do you feel how there's like a little pulling back here? A. Ah. The jaw drops. A. Ah. Now say I. I. A. Ah. I. Try that. Now let's try A. Ah. A. Ah. Okay. Let's try uh, 
uh. And that's the short sound of you. And I'm wondering, which of those sounds is the simplest to make? A, E, I, A. I would say it's a, uh, because all you do is just drop your jaw, everything's nice and loose, and there it goes, uh. So I call this uh sound of the short U the laziest sound. And the idea today is that I'm going to inter- introduce you to a concept called schwa. Can you repeat that? Schwa. And schwa is this tendency that we have to mess around with certain vowel sounds. And instead of saying the correct vowel sound, we insert this short U sound of uh. Why do we do this when we're speaking? Well, you know, we're we're lazy creatures and it's much easier just to drop your jaw and say uh. It also is a way that we can speed up some long words. You'll often hear it in the middle of um, long words, we'll insert a schwa. Um, It's often happening on open syllables uh, because on an open syllable, we'll be saying the name of the letter. So think about, think about A. So try and make the sound A. A. Can you say that? A. And now say uh. Uh. See how so much easier it is to make that uh sound? A. Uh. No comparison, right? So being the lazy creatures that we are, we often schwa A. Instead of saying A, we say uh. And just to show you how this works, if I have the word go, here's a really common word, and my first syllable would be this open syllable, so this would say its name. This should be a go, a long time ago. But you know we don't say that in stories. We say, just say it naturally, a long time ago. Do you see how we did that? So instead of saying a like we should, we schwad it. We said, uh, which is not correct. The thing about it is that even though the way, the way that we speak changes over time and we are lazy creatures, so we tend to mess around with the sounds improperly, uh, the way that we spell doesn't change. So this was created as A and it will stay A for all of time, but the way we speak has changed. We've gotten lazy and said, uh, improperly. So there's a symbol that we can use. It looks like an upside down E as the schwa symbol to say, hey, better read this as an uh. Here's our drill. Your teacher might have this one already. You're going to say uh instead of a. So uh, and then you'll read the second syllable. Once you do that successfully, you'll move on to the next one. You can read them right on the screen with me and slow them down as needed, or your teacher has them on the table and you can just work with them that way. So feel free to pause me here if you don't need me. Okay, and then we'll move on to show that schwa can also happen on the second syllable. So that would be Z and bra. And then you would just change the two and on you go. Once again, feel free to pause me and use the cards that you have on the table. You don't have to use mine. Or else feel free to carry on this way. Let's do the magnetic letter tile drill for reading. You'll need your cookie sheet with your letters spread in a rainbow shape for this one. Remember that we're working on the schwa. This means that if you hear that uh sound, you'll be writing a when you hear it in an open syllable. Your first sound is uh, and that's the first syllable. So it's all by itself that uh sound. Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. 
Your next sound is G. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct dial and pull it to the middle. And the last sound is O. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct dial and pull it to the middle. Okay, this is a two syllable word, so let's separate it into the two syllables. The A uh sound is your first syllable, and then the G and the O are your second syllable. So just separate the tiles. Now you hear the U uh and it's all by yourself. First read the word and what is it? Tap it, say it. Did you say ago, as in a long time ago? That's correct. Now how did you write it? Did you write it A-G-O? If you did, that's correct. The A is being schwad. So you can see that uh, when we come to spelling, when we hear that uh sound in an open syllable, we're, we're suspecting that it's being a schwa. This, of, this often, often happens in the names of women. My name is Shauna, and my name ends in A, but I'm being schwa. You hear the uh sound, Shauna. Think of all the women's names that, that that happens on, like Maria, Angela, Christina, Deborah, um, and I can just go on and on, Ava. Uh, yeah, so that's a really common way to schwa. Okay, let's put the tiles back and try a new one. Okay, your first sound is s. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Your next sound is O. Oh. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. That is your first syllable. Do you want to tap it and say it? Did you say so? If you did, that's correct. Let's put our second syllable on this word. The next sound is F. Can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And the last sound is uh. And can you repeat that sound? Now find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. You heard that uh sound and it's in an open syllable because there's no consonant sound after it. How did you write it? Okay, did you write it S-O-F-A? If you did, that's right, because we're, the sound is being schwad. That's why it turned into the uh. So what is that word? Tap it and say it. Did you get sofa? Another word for couch? If you did, that's correct. Teacher, if there's time, you could do another word in this way. And if not, you can move on to the single word sheet and have the student read down the two columns. And then after that, it's time for the short story. And then if you've introduced a timed reading element into the lesson, you'll do it after the short story. Do all that and then come back to me. Let's move into the writing section. Student, we're going to do the magnetic letter tile drill for spelling. So you'll need your cookie sheet with your letters in a rainbow shape. Your word is amid. Can you repeat that word? I'm thinking, up on the rooftop, amid all the clatter, I rose from my bed to see what was the matter. That's an old story about Christmas Eve. So amid. What's the first sound that you hear in amid? Okay. Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Now that's your first syllable, amid. So you heard that a uh sound all by itself. Ding, 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 ding. How'd you write it? Did you write, did you pick the A tile? If you did, that's correct. Now let's work on the second syllable, mid. So what's the first sound that you hear in mid? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the next sound that you hear in mid? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the last sound that you hear in mid? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Now let's put the two syllables together, a uh and mid, and tap it and say it. Did you spell it A-M-I-D? If you did, that's correct. Okay, put those tiles back and let's try a new word. 
Okay, two syllable word here. Extra. Can you repeat that word? I might say, I have an extra paper that I can give you. Extra. So first of all, how many syllables are in extra? Did you say two? If you did, that's correct. So let's sell, sell, uh, spell it syllable by syllable. So what's the first sound that you hear in X? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the next sound that you hear in X? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. Okay, we've got our first syllable, and now let's try the second syllable in extra. So what's the first sound that you hear in tra? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. What's the next sound that you hear in tra? Find the correct tile and pull it to the middle. And what's the last sound that you hear in tra? And remember, if it's that a uh sound is just hanging out by itself at the end of a syllable, then you've got an open syllable situation that's being schwad. So how'd you spell it? Tap and say the word. And did you spell it E-X-T-R-A? If you did, that's correct. Great work. Let's move on to writing some single words. You'll need your lined paper and some pencils. I'll say the word and then you repeat it and I'd like you to tap out the sounds. You can do it this way, tapping out the sounds with your fingers, or you could say the sounds and trace the letters on your hand or your arm or your leg as you do that. So you can choose the method, uh, but you'll do one of those before you try to write it down. Okay, your word is tundra. Can you repeat that word? Okay, people associate cold, harsh conditions with the tundra. Okay, there are two syllables in tundra. So tap it out syllable by syllable and write it down. Okay, teacher, you can check the work. And teacher, you can do some other words in this way if you have time, of course. And then you'll move on to the connected text for writing the sentences. You'll read all three sentences and the student will choose the two that will be written. After the student writes a sentence, make sure that the student checks the work with chops. Today we introduced a new concept. The concept was called schwa. Student, can you explain to your teacher what you know about schwa? Did you say that schwa is that lazy uh sound? And we today we learned how when you schwa an A, it makes the uh sound. And we have this upside down E as the symbol to show that something's being schwa'd. It happens on open syllables most often. And it's very common on the A. That's why we started by learning about schwa on A. But it can happen on other letters too. And it, and it doesn't always make the uh sound. It can make some other sounds as well. But most commonly it's making the uh. So in this word, instead of being a go, we say a uh, go. That lazy old schwa. Teacher and student, you can make a rule card about what it is to schwa something. And teacher, you can refer to the lesson plan where we introduce the new concept to do this. And that will be the last thing that you do before you go. Just make a little rule card about schwa. Okay, great job today. This was lesson 50. This is Shauna Odette from the Flying Cat Academy.